Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool. And in this video, I'm talking through the most beginner-friendly resin 3D printer I think you can get. So on the screen now is a filament 3D printer from Bamboo. And these are widely regarded as the most beginner-friendly filament printers you can buy. So why am I putting that up when we're meant to be talking about resin printers? Well, this is what we want to aspire to with a clean, easy setup and software that does everything you need for you, removing those barriers to entry, while coming in a beginner price-friendly bracket. And I think now, finally, we have got an answer to this. This is the RS 3D printer from Haygears, and it's got our desired beginner-friendly setup including things like a vat where the screws connected so you can't accidentally misplace them or not know where they're meant to go, a really sturdy build plate which has got a pressure release instead of a screw, and a clear and easy to follow on device UI, which will talk you through the setup process and get everything working. But thankfully we're at a time where most 3D printers will do that. But now comes our first major beginner hurdle, how are we going to calibrate our printer? You see, for each resin, we have to calibrate the printer to make sure it's going to print correctly, and that requires doing tests. And which test is even best? You've got the validation matrix, you've got the really funky one from Amera Labs, Table Flip Foundries has even got a sword. And there's a multitude of other ones for you to pick from as well, each with their own positives and negatives. So what do we do with a Haygears printer? Well, Haygears has its own software called Blueprint, and in a similar way to the bamboo filament printers, it's the software that's making all the difference here. So this is Blueprint Studios, and this is the calibration process. We go to New, we decide if we want a local or cloud project, we tell it what printer we're using, so I'm using the RS. We say if we've got any add-ons, no we don't, though this does look very interesting, I'll talk about that later. And then finally, once we've picked our application, we pick from our resin and I'm going to be using the past 10 for some testing. That is it. There's no calibration to do, no hours to waste, no staring at five different calibration tests that you've done to work out which one looks slightly better for your resin. Haygears has done all the testing for you and uploaded it into the software. So you can just pick the resin that's most suitable for your project and it will work straight away. You then just pick your layer thickness, we're going to go for high precision, and you're good to go. So let's bring in some models and we'll talk a bit more about this software because as I say this is what's making all the difference. It is also what deals with the other major 3D printing beginner barriers. So let's just bring in these ogres. These are from War Scenic from their Siege of Castigrad range and we'll just talk through what we need to do. So first off we're just going to select all of them and we're going to click repair. Now, one unusual thing here is that you should repair every single one of these models because of the way this software works and how it interprets some of the bits that overlap. And a lot of companies have a tendency to just leave overlapping parts. So this will repair all of those and just give you a quick report to say that yes, everything is fixed and you can repair multiple ones at the same time as you saw. Then we can get this to orient these miniatures automatically. Again, just control and A, orient, and you can pick your orientation. I'm going to be really honest about this. This works okay, but for organic objects, I found that this isn't as good as it could be. For example, if I click confirm, you'll notice that two of these have their faces towards the build plate. And we don't want that really. We don't want the supports going towards their faces because they're going to be the most visible parts of the model. Let's just control and Z and we'll just undo that. Now there are other options here on how to orient them, but you are always going to want to orient objects in a way where the most visible parts aren't going to have those supports if possible. So all I'm going to do is select all of them with control and A, and we're going to rotate these ourselves. And we can just rotate them round to somewhere at about there, somewhere between 45 and 60 degrees. Now comes the second biggest barrier to beginners, and the bit that makes most prints fail, setting up supports. Now we just move across the top here, going from one bit to the next, and I'm going to click support, and we can do these manually, or we can just automatically support them. Now this is something I would normally do in other software and then I would pretty heavily modify it myself to make sure it's going to work. Here the only thing I'm going to change is I'm going to change the contact type from sphere to none. Now some people do prefer having a spherical contact shape. This means you get a little ball at the end of your contact point. Let's just show that quickly if we generate these and zoom in here. 
you can see we just get a tiny little ball at the end of each of our contacts. Now these are quite nice because generally the contact will snap just below that ball and that means you just get a little bit to sand off leaving the part pretty much perfect after you've sanded it. Now what I'm going to do is change this to none. That's going to remove the existing supports and then we're going to get these without that and as long as we're 3D printing something small like a miniature that should be fine. Now we've ended up with a lot of very tiny supports that are actually really well defined. They're contacting all the major points and all the bits sticking out that we'd want. I've been through and looked at all of the models that are 3D printed with this and it has literally covered every single point. Now normally I wouldn't be a fan of all of these tiny supports. I would normally want something larger on maybe the lowest points otherwise I've found I get failed prints. Though for some reason, and I don't know how they've done this, in all of the 3D printing that I've done with the Hay Gears RS, I've not had one failed print. And at this point, I've got through about two bottles worth of resin, as well as testing out some other resins. And as I say, not one print has failed. I'll show you some of those examples as we go through, but I just wanted to stick with chronologically how I tested this. But not having to worry about supports is a big deal. It is another massive barrier to beginner 3D printing gone. And with the reliability of this software and the printer, it gets rid of a lot of those worries you often have when resin 3D printing. From there, we can go to layout and you can either auto layout or just move the objects around where you want them to be. And then we go to slice. And at this point, we have an option to put in a name. I'm not gonna bother. And you can double check that you've got the correct height. Note, you can't change your resin at this point because I imagine that changes how many supports they need. And then all we do is click slice. Now this is my one criticism with this bit of software. I would really like this to have some sort of bar that shows the progress of this because otherwise you just don't know how long this is gonna take and you also don't know that it's working, though trust me it is. But if you do have the mobile app, it also does ping up with a message when this has been completed slicing. So you can generally just walk away or do something else and it will tell you when you're good to go. Once that's done, we just come to our slice files and we've got a few options here. We can either just send it to our 3D printer, though I've got mine in my garage, which has awful internet reception. So instead, I'm just going to click save as and then I can put it on a USB stick and print it from there. Now, I appreciate that was quite a long time showing you through software, but I wanted to show you something that other videos haven't potentially, and what does make this printer so easy to use, and it's that setup process that does it. Now back to the printer, and then we'll get on with some results, but I just wanted to show this, and that is, my printer has a heartbeat. So one of the worst things when 3D printing is, until you can actually see the 3D print, when it first comes over the edge of the vat, which could take maybe two or three hours worth of printing, you don't know if it's printing right. The prints could have come away from the bill plate and you're just wasting your time and resin. But Hagia's printers have got sensors that are actually checking the force that is working on that bill plate, basically the suction, and that tells you that it is working and you've got no issues. So you can leave your printer safe in the knowledge that it's monitoring if the print is working. Anyway, let's finally look at some models and those ogres we were printing. So here you can see those tiny supports and how easy everything comes away from the build plate. But what's really nice is you can just get these supports off. This is after they've been cleaned. And you can see I'm pulling them away without any form of heating or hot water, which sometimes you want to use to get rid of those supports. And you can see how clean those connection points are. There is almost no cleanup to do at all which if you haven't used a resin 3D printer before is very impressive. And here's the final result of those ogres. Not a single layer line in sight, all of the details beautifully captured, and that's without any cleanup at all. And here's a better view of the back of one of them. And you can see how well the Blueprint software has done at positioning all of these supports and how the tiny supports have done a really good job of not leaving any damage behind. From this point on, it became my kind of mission to try and find something that the auto supports would fail at and to actually get an error in a print. I tried bigger objects, such as this massive turret, smaller bits like these plasma containers, which also printed out fine. I did some tiny pistols that were just on hands. Again, no printing issues there at all with the automatic supports. And I also found in the software that as you clone, you get a mirror function, which is nice as it saves a few clicks. I've also printed banners, power fists, test prints of the sides of whole large tanks, and these awesome scout models. Basically, whatever I threw at it just did great. 
And I kept discovering other fantastic bits about the software. For example, when cloning, not only can you mirror, you can also do it in a grid pattern, which saves so much time on placing everything and just makes it so much more convenient. And it was about at this point that I realized that I was actively not using my other 3D printers if it meant that waiting an hour or two, I could just use the Hey Gears RS because it was just so easy to use and I didn't have that concern that I was gonna come back to a failed print. And it was about at this point that I realized this isn't just the best printer that I've found for beginners. This is actually the best 3D printer I've used full stop. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't think this printer is faultless. Every printer has its issues, and I would say that the flat top of the build plate, meaning that you need to scrape the resin off, it doesn't just flow off, is a design mistake. And the bottles that allow this to autofill for me is just something I don't care about. It's over-engineering, and I'd rather save the money on resin bottles. But the little details that check whether my prints are going to be successful, like it having a thermometer somewhere that detects the temperature of the air and tells me if it's likely to be too cold and affect my print, is something I want in a printer. Now, speaking of which, there are a range of accessories you can also get for the printer or as part of the Hey Years ecosystem. One is a heated vat with what I think is an infrared thermometer to check the temperature of the resin and get it to the perfect temperature for your prints. For me in the UK, this is a must for a 3D printer to have. I've seen the difference having a heated vat makes to my prints and their consistency. And I love that while it's heating up, the build plate moves up and down in the vat to help spread out the temperature and mix the heating resin. Though admittedly, that's because I keep my printer in a garage, as earlier mentioned. If you've got this in a heated room, it's totally unnecessary, and I like that it's an optional purchase. Hages also have a dedicated cleaner and curing station. I was a bit dubious about the cleaning station and this swooshing motion that I thought might damage my models, but even those thin barrels on the sniper rifles came out fine, so I don't think that worry is warranted. I also like this double bucket system where you flush the IPA out to get to your model so you don't need to put the whole build plate in there, though I would say the cost is probably a bit too steep on this. Though other companies' cleaning stations are generally over £100, so maybe it's not too much to ask for. On the other hand, the curing station is great. It does a better job than any of the other curing stations that I've used and also has the ability to heat up, which is relevant for certain resins or potentially could be used to evaporate the IPA on your models before you do your curing and that definitely saves some time. Finally, you've got this pulsing release module, which I haven't tried. I want to be clear about that. But this uses small blasts of air between layers in the resin vat and that will help reduce the sticking force as the build plate moves up. Hagius claims that this can really reduce the amount of supports and the size of the supports you need, reducing the support marks even further, and that sounds like a pretty swish bit of kit, but definitely not a beginner necessity. And add that to the large range of pre-dialed in resins that Hagius offers, you've got this fantastic printer for almost anyone, including beginners, that does all the hard work for you, but if you have got some really specific use, you've got the modules that you can add to this to allow that to work. For example, here's some of those Scouts printed again, but this time in the PAP-10 resin, which is their high detailed resin. And then I printed their rifle separately in their highly flexible resin, meaning that they're just never gonna break when transported. But I must admit, I wouldn't have been making this video as a beginner-friendly printer video if it wasn't for the fact that there was now the PAS-10 resin available, which is the one that I used for all of the earlier tests. And while their other resins can be quite expensive, though still cheaper than the resin I'd choose to use if I was using another 3D printer, the PAS-10 has excellent surface detail and a really nice amount of flex. You can see it's not quite as much as the flexible resin, but it does mean that your models aren't just gonna casually break as you're transporting them or when you drop them, and I have dropped these. And the same goes for the RS printer itself. It's currently on sale and I'm assuming this will continue into Black Friday. I wouldn't expect it to go lower than this though. And I don't know when the price will go back up. And I wouldn't say at its full price it is particularly beginner friendly, but at its current price, you are not gonna find a printer that is this good with software that is this intuitive and easy to use for anything close to this price. So hopefully that's given you some ideas of what this printer can do. If you do have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section. There is an affiliate link in the description which costs you no more to use, but does put a little bit of money towards the channel. And if I ever find any discount codes, I'll put them in the description as well. Hope to see you in the next video and have a great day.